Welcome to Alaska Adventure, hosted by Dr. Meinert, Superintendent of the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District. This award-winning podcast is your gateway to the heart of Alaska's educational landscape. In each episode, we'll explore the unique perspectives of guests who are shaping education in the last frontier. Join us on Alaska Adventure as we share the insights and inspirations found in Alaska's K-12 classrooms. Well, welcome to you, or welcome back to the Alaska Adventure Podcast. I'm Dr. Luke Miner, the superintendent of the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District, and super excited about our conversation today. Uh, we have some special guests, uh, Brianna Gray, who's a part of our student support services team. She's our executive director, which you've seen before if uh, you've uh, visited our podcast. And then a very special guest, uh, Patricia Weissenfeld. Did I say that correctly? Wine Zaffel. Well, I am. I you were so close and so, it's a difficult I, word. I tried it so many times too, but uh, nonetheless, we're super excited to have you oh, in Alaska you. Um, and specifically here in Fairbanks. Um, Patricia's up. Uh, she's working with our school district on communications and our family engagement goal. And her and Bree have had a lot of conversations about how that might best roll out within our school district. And then the past couple of days, she's been working with our educators and principals in the school district. And we're really excited about uh, what the outcome of that will be. Um, but wanted to do a quick introduction uh, so the, the listeners get to know you a little bit more. And then uh, we'll dive into the conversation. Perfect. All right. Patricia travels the nation helping school districts improve their school to home communication practices. Patricia served 10 years as the executive director of community schools and family engagement for the Evansville Vanderburg School Corporation. She holds two degrees in journalism from Northwestern University and spent 15 years working in television news, which is going to come in handy. Right. Today. This is my sweet I mean, she's spot. She's already given me tips mic. and tricks. So <laughs> podcast is going to be infinitely better this year uh, because of Patricia's um, dedication here. So thank you. And then uh, Patricia is the author of Closing the Loop, a powerful and practical guide to the school to home communication. And she also serves as a co-chair of the Indiana Community Schools Network. So um, a breadth of experience in schools and uh, network journalism is just exciting to have you here. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's been wonderful to work with your team. They are fantastic. Yeah, well, we, we think so too. Well, I've enjoyed every minute. <laughs> so maybe we can dive into what is some of the work that you've been doing the last couple of days with our Fairbanks team? Well, we've been talking a lot about just good communication practices. So what I do is I have combined my both of my careers so I take the principles of broadcast journalism to coach educators in how to communicate better, specifically with families. But a lot of my stuff is just super practical. So you'll see that you're using it with each other as the year rolls out. You know, it's really about this idea of clear, concise, compassionate communication. And we need that with families right now. Yeah, we definitely need that. I mean, there's so much noise in the world. And so for the school district to try to break through that and really connect with families, um, because here in Fairbanks uh, and schools across the nation, we know um, families are the biggest support networks for our students. There's a direct correlation between student success and uh, the ability of families to engage and support their students. And so we want to do everything we can to ensure that we're delivering that clear communication to help support them and their students. Right. So. They can't participate in the learning process unless they understand our language mm -hmm. and unless they understand our processes, right? So whatever we can do to facilitate that bridge will help them be able to participate as the equal partners we want them to be. I love that. So what are some, um, maybe some clear practical takeaways of the ways that schools can clearly communicate with families? Well, that's, you know, a whole day training. Yeah, for sure. We're going to boil it down right to down. about <laughs> but, three minutes. <laughs> but I think, you know, one of the things in education, we've got a real problem with our big words. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, these are not words that families use every day. Yep. And when I started in education, I had no education background, right? I came from journalism. And actually, I had um, been home with my kids. I had the privilege to make a choice to stay home with my kids. So I didn't even know what Microsoft Office was. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm sitting in these meetings and all these big words are being thrown around and I was trying to Google under the table to keep up. But it was very off putting. Mm -hmm. And frankly, it was discouraging and it made me feel like I wasn't very smart. And I think when you think about those big words that we use, post-secondary, curriculum, mm -hmm. fluency, you know, all of these words, um, they can be barriers when it comes to allowing families to participate in the learning process. 
Absolutely. So that's something that uh, we're going to work hard on. I think we've done a little bit in the past, but we'll continue to, uh, we did this great exercise yesterday, reading through communications from another school district and, you know, critiquing uh, whether or not they were, you know, the words that they were using that their readership would understand those words and if it was inviting to those families. And so I think that was just such a great exercise for us to participate in. Cause I know, you know, as I'm looking through communications, we're going to send out, that's something right away I'm going to be looking for, like what's the readership level for this. And are we using those jargoning words? Because we do that without thinking because this is the space that we live in. Um, but most people don't necessarily live in that space. That's exactly right. I think it's been really, well, it has been, it's been really great to see all our participants in the trainings working together and doing our Mm self-assessments and looking at our own work that we're doing and a lot of laughing and just like, wow, yes, we totally understand why we need to change our vocabulary, why we need to change the words that we're using. And um, it's a simple thought, right? It's a simple thing to do, um, but so important. And Bree, so you, you kicked off this process for us and you found Patricia and um, have been really working hard on the communication side and student support services. Just uh, they do a tremendous job providing wraparound services for all of our families and really helping the school district um, bridge that gap between families at times. And so um, I guess like how did you find Patricia and how did this start? <laughs> yeah, so one thing that I love about student support services is we get to work and talk and engage with families every single day. So we have different avenues um, that we speak with families we have parent advisory committees that we work with and we get to hear about the things that they're seeing with their students with their own families and how they're engaging with schools we have so many staff that are in district wide and they also get to communicate to us what they're seeing and we were at a conference um, that we attended for our title schools and we saw a presentation and we thought wow this is perfect timing because our department also creates the district-wide family engagement plans we work with title schools on our engagement plans and we work with the state um, to ensure that we're engaging in two-way communication and that is something that uh, Patricia was able to really really speak to in a way that made sense and so I thought we have to have her here and aligns perfectly with what we're doing right now in, t- in terms of Parent Square mm-hmm. and different tools that we're using. So I thought it was really exciting. It's been a lot of fun to learn. I've learned so much. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate yeah, no, that. It's really exciting. And when you say family engagement, uh, what do we mean by family engagement? Well, I think, you know, oftentimes we think of it as sending home newsletters mm-hmm. or people coming to a family fun night. But when you think about what true, meaningful family engagement is, what our real goal is, it's to be able to partner with families. Mm-hmm. Families are the experts in their children. Mm-hmm. We are the experts in education, but we're equal, right? And we need to be able to create a bridge so that we can both bring our expertise. We need to help families understand what education is like today, Mm -hmm. what their kids are learning, so that they can support that learning at home. But on the other side of the equation, we need to know all of the learning that's happening in these informal spaces. Kids learn every day. They learn in their neighborhoods. They learn in their villages, right? And so we need to understand that so we can connect the learning that's happening at home to what we're doing at school. So that's really what our end goal is. It's not so much about you know, making sure they've got, you know, a login or have signed the permission slip or something like that. It's, it's much deeper than that. It's really about relationships. Yeah, I love that so much. And just those informal learnings, um, Bree, I know you work with our Alaska Native Education Program, and I, it, my mind kind of immediately jumps there. There's so many informal learnings that um, our Alaska Native families have with students and how powerful that is for our students and to bring that into school and making sure that we're, you know, allowing that um, communications to come back and forth from the school district and we're supporting those communications. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's interesting. So I came from a rural community and came to what I call the big city. right? <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of what I learned is from watching my grandmother and the d- traditional practices that mm-hmm. we have. Um, and it really does translate into coming to school and learning how to be into a cl- being in a classroom, but also the educators who really built relationships with me and understood why I did things a certain way, why I spoke a certain way, why mm-hmm. I had to eat certain foods. Um, it really made my educational experience that much more important and also engaged in learning. I wanted to be there. I wanted to learn. Um, So that was really important for me. And I'm seeing that in my children as well. I'm a parent. And so it's a lot of fun to be able to engage with our community um, and just learn about them and their different ways of being. Yeah, absolutely. I saw a great example of this last week when I was out in schools. I visited Effie Cochran and um, I I apologize. I can't remember the individual that was in the class, but uh, she was at the training yesterday and um, she was up in front of the group of students and 
you know, like there was just such a powerful connection between her and the students. And it wasn't like a teacher to student role. It was almost like a family, like a family atmosphere. And she was able to talk to the students in a way that you don't often see in schools. And I was just like, oh, if you could bottle this up and take it into every classroom and with every family, like there's just a powerful story to be had there. And so um, I love that we're focusing on this and you're helping us uh, break down those barriers and have better communications with our families. Me too. She is amazing. Yes. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) <laughs> um, and then one other one, one other takeaway I had from yesterday, I got, I, I got to sit in on just a little while and um, vocabulary we use with families, I think is important. One of the takeaways was caregivers. That was a learning for me rather than guardians. A lot of times we'll say um, parents are guardians or parents are in families. And I liked that term caregivers. Can you mm-hmm. unpack that for us a little yeah, bit? Yeah, no, it's so great. It's such a little change that you can make immediately that is a big impact. Mm -hmm. So we write these letters that seem so institutional, right? Dear parents and guardians. And if we just simply write dear parents and caregivers, number one, it's more accurate. Mm -hmm. The people who love our children and make sure they get to school are not guarding them. They're caring for them, right? And it's also a softer word that can build a relationship. It's recognition for what I am doing Mm -hmm. as a caregiver, you know, to have an to, to help this child and love this child. And I think it's just, you know, practical, little simple change you can make. What it also does is it gets beyond the word. So, yes, we need to change some of the jargony language. You know, we, we need to do that not only for our families but our community partners. But even beyond that, there's a tone there mm-hmm. that we really need to begin, you know, to, to work on. And in education, we often have a very – formal, authoritative tone. And that can be very Mm off-putting. And that's like the word guardian, right? But if instead we strike a really partnership tone, then we would use a a term like caregiver, right? I love that. I mean, we talk a lot about uh, walking side by side with employees, walking side by side with families and students. It's not a front or behind. It's all in this together. 100%. We, we look forward to celebrating alongside you, mm-hmm. standing alongside you as your child walks across that stage. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So um, Patricia does have another session that she's rushing back to. <laughs> and I promise that, you know, while I could write her a late pass to the session, <laughs> that I would try not to. So um, any final takeaways that you would want to leave um, our viewership with today before we break? Well, I think what's important is that sometimes we look at communication as just something we have to do, right? There's a lot of kind of, I send home the newsletter, I communicated type of stuff. I think it's really important to remember that every communication we have with a parent or caregiver is really a precious opportunity, Mm -hmm. whether it's an exchange in the pickoff drop-off line or it is you know, uh, we see someone at a family fun night or we're at the grocery and we run into a, a grandmother. We need to understand that each one of those interactions is so important. Yep. I mean, it's like gold. Yep. So taking the time, taking a breath out of our busy day to actually make the most of those. That's how we build the relationships we need to help kids succeed. I absolutely love that. Um, one of the things we talk about is some of the most most important and impactful conversations we have are actually over the broccoli at Fred Meyer, you know, as, yes. we're, as we're shopping. It's not yes. in our schools. It's not necessarily in these formal places. It's uh, at Fred Meyer. It's at our kids' soccer games and those types of things. And so want the community to know as uh, you see me out at Fred Meyer <laughs> or Costco or whatever it might be, <laughs> uh, feel free to come up and have a conversation with me. I would love to have your feedback on how we're doing as a school district, specifically on communications, if there's different ways that we can better communicate with you as families. I'm always open to that feedback and would love to take the opportunity to chat with you and don't feel like, oh, that's a superintendent. I can't talk to him. Um, I'll probably be informally dressed with a baseball hat, maybe (laughs) shorts, uh, but feel free to come up and talk to me and would love to have that conversation uh, with you. So, Bree, anything else that you want to touch on before we break? I think same. You know, the door is always open to have communication. So if we are out and you see us, please come and talk to us. Also, 
come into our spaces too. We love to have you, everyone volunteer in schools, come see what we're doing in our schools, come see what we're doing in programming. We would love to have the opportunity just to show what we do and build those connections. Absolutely. So that's great. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. <laughs> uh, do you want to put a plug in for our strategic planning efforts this year? That's one way that we want to engage with the community and uh, really the strategic plan. Uh, we'll do a separate podcast uh, just on the strategic plan coming up here in the near future. But, um, you know, the strategic bl- plan guides a lot of what we're going to do in the next five years. And that plan needs to be reflective of the community that we live in and the educational system that we want. And so um, that doesn't happen without uh, engagement from the entire community. So be on the lookout for all of those engagement opportunities because we would love to hear from you and we want a plan that really represents our community and serves us well for the next five years to come. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you. This is another episode of the Alaska Adventure Podcast. I am Dr. Luke Minard. I look forward to seeing you next time. And thanks for tuning in today. Thank you for embarking on this Alaska adventure with us. Hit that subscribe button and we'll meet you on the next episode.